Commissioner Shri Ajay Bisariyaji for hosting this online Gandhi Katha 
this evening amidst the challenging times of coronavirus covid-19 pandemic and during the commemoration of the 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi i am grateful to shri sunil kumar sharma ji second secretary at ci otawa and convey my warm wishes to the people of canada we stand in solidarity with you in our common fight against the covid-19 pandemic gandhi katha is based on the ancient indian oral tradition of katha with bhajans and dhuns or hymns in today's gandhi katha shrimati swati bhagat and shri deepak kalra will be singing the bhajans and the dhuns the technical support and the powerpoint presentation will be given by dr ravi chopra the lyrics of the gandhi katha dhun are composed by late shri narayan desai ji and i'm very grateful to all of them we started today's gandhi katha with gandhi ji's favorite guru nanak dev ji's bhajan sumiran kar le mere mana on his 550th prakash utsav gandhi ji had said that the message of mutual affection truth brotherhood and religion of guru nanak dev ji is beyond all religions castes communities regional divisions and will always be widespread and everlasting today is the world food safety day with the theme of food safety everyone's business to promote global food safety awareness and call upon countries and decision makers and the general public to take action mahatma gandhi's simple healthy diet which consisted of raw vegetables curd fruit unpolished rice grains millets leafy vegetables lemon and honey and limited consumption of food and his intake was less than 100 calories per day which kept him seemingly frail sorry 1000 calories per day which kept him his seemingly frail body in a very fit condition till the very end of his life he advocated for the importance of physical activity he was a vegetarian and was against tobacco and alcoholism so here is the role model of a nutrition and a diet guru to learn from his control of palate a swad for leading a healthy and productive life gandhi ji had said that one should eat not in order to please the palate but just to keep the body going and that is why his food intake was up to 1000 calories per day today is a special day in gandhi ji's life on 7th june 1893 exactly 107 27 years ago barrister mohandas gandhi then a young man of 24 was thrown out of his first class compartment of a train in south africa at peter marisburg station because of racial discrimination he told the officer that he will not leave the seat voluntarily and the railway officer can throw him out if they want to as he was thrown out from the train he had to spend that whole night in the very cold weather of at the peter marisburg station that day a metamorphosis took place 
द इंडिविजुअल बैरिस्टर मोहन दास गांधी ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड इन टू द सोसाइटल गांधी भाई द सीट्स ऑफ सत्याग्रह वर सोन ऑन दैट डे एंड द महामानव वॉज बॉर्न गांधी जी बिगैन सत्याग्रह इन साउथ अफ्रीका इन 1907, हंड्रेड एंड सेवन फोर्टीन ईयर्स आफ्टर दिस इंसिडेंट्स वेन ही ऑर्गेनाइज ऑपोजिशन टू द एशियाटिक रजिस्ट्रेशन लॉ इट वॉज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द ब्लैक एक्ट एंड गांधी जी इज नॉन वायलेंट मूवमेंट और सत्याग्रह इंस्पायर्ड जनरेशन ऑफ पीपल टू रिजॉल्व to opposing injustice through non-violent and peaceful movements all around the world noted examples are madiba nelson mandela and reverend martin luther king jr who had started the civil rights movement in the usa in 1960s martin luther reverend martin luther king jr was as inspired by mahatma gandhi and advocated for non-violent social change learning from him so powerful was the movement that he inspired that congress enacted the civil rights act in 1964 in the usa in the same year king himself was honored with the nobel peace prize it was no coincidence that gandhi ji and mandela whose paths never crossed directly both embarked on the campaign against discrimination in south africa madaba mandela had famously said that gandhi's values of tolerance mutual respect and unity for which he stood and acted had a profound influence on our liberation movement and on my thinking gandhi ji was also an environmentalist a visionary a seasoned economist and an experimental scientist besides being the apostle of peace and nonviolence according to my understanding mahatma gandhi's life was an epic of faith and endeavor his faith was in truth the ultimate reality of truth and he endeavored to attain it through non-violence throughout his life till the very last breath gandhi ji's adherence to truth non-violence and purity of means has inspired me to give gandhi katha so that people can put their hearts into understanding gandhi ji and get inspired to learn from his extraordinarily extraordinary ethical spiritual life ethical leadership revolutionary thoughts action and his life long service to humanity against all forms of injust- injustice and discrimination gandhi ji used to remain positive under all circumstances and that was his main trait he had faced many challenges in his life and i think as the world is reeling under the impact of corona virus covid 19 pandemic and everyone is affected it is important to face it humbly with reverence to the virus gratitude and surrender to the divine forces in nature which are beyond our control fearlessly intelligently and with a positive outlook towards life the more positive we the ordinary people can remain the sooner we will be able to take this situation in an auspicious direction for gandhi ji this was his way of life in 1904 mahatma gandhi established his first ashram called the phoenix settlement in durban he started his experiments with the face to face non violent society by community living voluntary self control 
bread labor for self-reliance and living in poverty. He set up his printing press to bring out the first newspaper called the Indian Opinion for public advocacy and to raise public opinion about the problems faced by the Indians, especially the indentured labor due to racial discrimination. Gandhiji set up the second ashram along with his friend Kalan Vak in 1910 and named it Tolstoy Farm. His mentors were Kavi Raichan Bhai from India who had taught him Anasakti or non-attachment, John Ruskin whose book Unto This Last had taught him the life of a simple community living with red labor and Leo Tolstoy whose book on the kingdom of God is within you which had taught him many many principles of non-violence, love and renunciation. In September 1906, Gandhiji had commenced his Satyagraha which molded into weapon of protest through non-violence and peaceful methods and it was known as Satyagraha and that is his first gift to humanity. Gandhiji returned to India in 1915 and set up the Sabarmati Ashram in Gujarat on 17 June 1917 and lived there up to 12th March 1930. It is from here that he set out for the famous Dandi March against the salt tax imposed by the British colonial regime. Salt Satyagraha aroused the interest of the world in this novel method of non-violence which Gandhi was using for bringing up, bringing out social change which was adopted by many leaders of the world with conspicuous success. Gandhiji established Sevagra Ashram in 1936 and that is in Vardha Maharashtra and he stayed there till 1944. That was his last ashram. Sevagra Ashram became the training ground for constructive programs of Gandhiji which is his second gift to humanity. He along with Kasturba and all the ashram inmates lived there in voluntary poverty much like the poor millions of Indians. He had set a rule, set of 11 rules for the ashram and if any rule is followed for a lifetime it becomes an observance. It was called Ekadasha Vrata. Ekadasha means 11. And that is his third gift to humanity for living a moral, ethical and spiritual life of voluntary self-control. And the 11 observances are non-violence, truth, chastity, non-stealing, non-possession, fearlessness, control of the palate and control of all the senses, equality of religion, swadeshi, bread labor and removal of untouchability. I am happy to inform you that I was born in Sevagram Ashram. My father was inspired by Gandhiji since his childhood and joined the freedom struggle and was imprisoned many times. He then came to Sevagram Ashram and even after Gandhiji passed on for more than five decades, my father and all of us continued to do Gandhi Karya by walking on the path shown by Gandhiji to humanity and not only to our family. So what I'm telling you is based on what my father has told me my own experience and understanding of Mahatma Gandhi who has inspired a generation of people who are still following his path and will continue to do so in the future also. Gandhiji is one of the greatest spiritual leaders and the wellness guru in the history of the world. He was a visionary who saw beyond the ills of the body to the far greater ills of the soul 
and with divine wisdom sought to heal the soul of the world in torment. This wisdom was according to the ancient tradition Indian civilization and the messages of the Bhagavad Gita. And Gandhiji lived according to the central messages of the Bhagavad Gita selflessly without possession and attach attachment. Therefore, for any of you who want to live as per the art of living espoused by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, Mahatma Gandhi is the role model. Gandhiji lived in an era of tremendous political turmoil, extreme poverty and a time when untouchability was rampant. Not only that, this was also a time when various communicable diseases like leprosy, tuberculosis, malaria, plague, as well as malnutrition which occurred regularly and people were with limited resources and uh, inadequate facilities for treatment. Coupled with all this, the world reeled under the impact of Spanish influenza pandemic in 1918. In all these ashrams, Gandhiji used to start and end his day with all religious prayers, which used to take place early in the morning at 4 a.m. and at 7 p.m. in the evening under the open sky. Gandhiji said that ultimately all the religions point to the same truth, and our ancient scriptures, our Rigveda, confirms it by saying, Ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti. There is only one truth or true being, and learned persons call it by many names. The verse is reminding us that there are many paths that lead to God, and therefore Gandhiji said that everyone must study the essence of all the religions in an attitude of reverence and must have friendship and respect for the practitioners of different religions. All of Gandhiji's friends were from different religions from around the world. One of his legacies to the world is non-violent conflict resolution through interfaith dialogue, inter-religious dialogues. In the ashram prayers, in the morning and evening, the first verse from the Isha Vasya Upanishad, Upanishad, that is the Upanishad, used to be recited, and that is Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam Yatkincha Jagatyan Jagat Tena Tyaktena Gunjika Madrudha Kasya Sviddhanam. That everything in this universe belongs to God, nothing really belongs to you. Enjoy the objects of the world in an attitude of perfect non-attachment. Enjoy it with a feeling of sacrifice, taking to the extent that is necessary for you and leave the rest for others in the society. Never ever crave the possession of others. Nothing really belongs to you. Now we will listen to this entire philosophy in the form of a Gandhi Kathadhan which is Naya Tera Naya Mera Ishwar ka yeh raaj hai. Oh, <laughs> 
example, Mahatma Gandhi and Kasturba Gandhi had contributed immensely 123 years ago to public health emergencies taking by taking decisive actions, did it early without hesitation and communicated effectively with humility, collaboration, empathy and emotion in the service of humanity. Gandhiji wanted to become a doctor from his very young age and his inner calling or Swadharma as Bhagavad Gita terms it was to serve others and that stayed with him. He could not become a doctor but that desire to serve others was always there. Natvaham kamaye rajyam na swargam na punarbhavam kamaye dukkhataptanam praninam artinashanam I do not want rajya kingdom or wealth or any fame. I merely want to serve the person who is suffering with so much sorrow was what Gandhiji's inner calling was. He dedicated his life to serving the entire humanity and it started from his very childhood when he started serving his father who was on his, on his sick bed when Mohandas was still a young lad. In 1896, Barrister Mohandas Gandhi took training in nursing in cottage hospital in South Africa and volunteered to care for the patients. In 1897, while he was living in Durban, the native South African patient came to him looking for help. He was a leprosy patient and Gandhiji called him inside, washed his wounds with potassium permanganate, bandaged him, treated him and kept him at home. And later on, he requested Parsi Rustamji, his friend, to build the hospital for leprosy patients because there were many leprosy patients who were being shunned by the family and the society. And he continued this in India also. And one of the constructive programs was leprosy eradication. And Gandhiji inspired thousands of young, young students and young men and women to devote their lives for this cause. During 1899 to 1902, in the Second Anglo Boer War, Gandhiji established the Natal Indian Ambulance Corps, along with 300 free Indians and 800 indentured labor, and attended to sick and wounded Boers uh, as stretcher bearers and did such heroic work at the front, very often under fire. In 1904, when the outbreak of bubonic plague took place in Johannesburg, in the Kuli settlement where the Indian indentured labor lived in very unhygienic and squalid conditions, both Gandhiji and Kasturba Gandhi immediately rushed to serve the patients who were very, very sick, quarantined them in an empty godown by cleaning and sanitizing it and treated them through nature cure and Kasturba Gandhi went from home to home asking for bed sheets and bed pants and all kinds of things and spreading awareness on preventive measures to the family members. In the Zulu uprising of 1906, the ambulance corps established by Gandhiji treated and took care of the wounded Zulu warrior prisoners. When the World War I broke out in 1914, during Gandhiji's and Kasturba Gandhi's visit to London, where he had gone to meet his political guru, Gopal Krishna Gokhaleji, Mahatma Gandhi immediately started organizing and enlisting recruiting members for the Indian Ambulance Corps. But at that time, he had to come back to India and he, they returned in 1915. Gandhiji got very busy. Uh, in going around India to understand India as per his political guru's advice and thereafter got involved in the national freedom movement. But in 1918, there was an outbreak of Spanish influenza pandemic and Gandhiji opened the Sabarmati Ashram as the quarantine center 
told everybody to observe social distancing and treated them through nature cure. In fact, their eldest daughter-in-law succumbed to Spanish influenza, but he provided right diet to boost the immunity of the patients, counseled the family members to stay safe and healthy during the times of the most deadly pandemic of 1918. Gandhiji had said on 10th November 1918 that our ancestors could build such strong bodies in the past. But today we are reduced to a state of miserable weakness and are easily infected by noxious germs moving about in the air. There is only one and only one really effective way by which we can save ourselves from this even in our present broken state of health. That way is the way of self-restraint or sayam on reducing or imposing a limit on our acts as well as our wants. Gandhiji used to call himself the commander-in-chief of the non-violent army and was always the first one to attend to people in any potentially dangerous situation situation without being afraid of any consequences. That was one of his traits and we will now sing one of the dhuns which is Lagire Lagan, Lagire Lagan Satya Ahimsa Me Man Mera Magan. He was in the quest of truth and non-violence through purity of means and conducted his Satyagraha through that. So please listen in. Gandhiji was very interested and in health and well, well being. He was very vigilant about his health and remained vigilant about the health of others as well. He said that our lifestyle should be such that it should not let any disease come anywhere near us and every person is responsible for looking after his or her body mind and spirit impeccably. He advised that in order for keeping healthy physically, mentally and spiritually, we should have perfect understanding of our bodies which is made up of the five elements that are found in the nature and in the universe. And that's what has been told by our ancient seer and sages of India and these five elements are air, water, fire, earth and space or akash. For the wellness of our bodies, the balance and harmony between all these five elements is absolutely necessary. During the COVID-19 pandemic that is enveloping, enveloping ourselves in the rhythms and forms of nature can be transformative and healing. Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition of India, recommends spending time with nature every day. Doing so allows us to experience the wonderment of this existence with all our senses. Nature's, nature allows us to shift our attention beyond the domain of our ego and to recognize that we are in 
inextricably connected to the universe. From the body-mind perspective, Gandhiji's standpoint was that health is an optimal integration of body, mind, spirit, soul and environment. Environment is our extended body. There is a nice Vedic expression which says, as is the atom, so is the universe. As is the microcosm, so is the macrocosm. As is the universal body, so is the cosmic body. As is the universal mind, so is the cosmic mind. Yoga and meditation integrate all the components of health. And the Sanskrit proverb says, Yatha Pinde Tatha Brahmande Yatha Brahmande Tatha Pinde You are the universe within the universe. As with the self, so is the universe. What is going on within you is the same as what is going on in the nature. Our ancient Indian scriptures also teach us that Mana Evam Manushyanam Karanam Bandha Moksha Yoga Bandhaya Vishaya Saktam Muktam Nirvishayo Smritaha For man, the mind is the kind of cause of bondage and the mind is the cause of liberation. Mind absorbed in sense objects is the cause of bondage and the mind detached from the sense objects is the cause of liberation. This is the second verse from the Amrit Bindu Upanishad which is part of the five Amrit Bindu Upanishads of Atharva Veda from where we have got the system of Ayurveda. Gandhiji was a strong believer in nature cure, the Ayurvedic system of medicine and learned yoga as well. His experiments with nature cure and herbal medicines were always first on himself. He used to call himself a practical idealist. Whatever he read, heard or saw and if he liked it, he immediately started practicing on it. Waiting was no option for Gandhiji. He said that an ounce of practice is worth more than tons of preaching. So he also advised his friends and disciples to follow these remedies and treated and cured more than 30,000 patients through nature cure. He was equally interested in the modern system of medicine as it was growing at that time. The spirit of research for diagnostics and treating that fired the uh, modern scientist always interested him very much. Mahatma Gandhi was a man of great vision and determination and an exceptionally gifted psychologist who knew the spirit, pulse and characteristic of his countrymen like no other man has ever known. He fought against poverty and disease with weapons peculiarly his own and those were truth, non-violence and purity of means through self-sacrifice and suffering, penance and fasting. He knew that these weapons would inspire others about the nobility of character. Gandhiji was the greatest humanitarian and a social reformer of the world who dedicated his life and labored for improving the standards of living, of sanitation, of education of his, of his people and worked for the eradication of untouchability in India. He strove incessantly to practice the importance of cleanliness, sanitation, hygiene, both and cleanliness of inner body, mind and soul as well as the outer envi environment. Gandhiji, as I have told you, was the first environment, environmentalist who with his stunning premonition and knowledge had declared that the earth has enough for man's needs but not for man's greed. He had predicted that greed will be the main reason for environmental degradation and ecological crisis. He had also said that the earth the air, the land and the water are not an inheritance from our forefathers but a loan from our children. So we have to hand it over to them as it was handed over to us. 
Gandhiji recognized the need for conservation and preservation way before the dangers of climate change had preoccupied the world. He was the original thinker and clearly understood the reality of misuse, overuse and abuse of the global com commons. Mahatma Gandhi is the most powerful visionary of the 20th century. His principles of Swadeshi, Swachata, Seva and Sarvode are relevant to face with reality the current COVID-19 pandemic. I must also inform you that Gandhiji's translation of the Bhagavad Gita is called Anasakti Yoga or the Gospel of Selfless Action. Lord Sri Krishna enunciates the main facts of life in Bhagavad Gita and Mahatma Gandhi lived accordingly through the human body and after his sadhana of 38 years living on the messages of the Bhagavad Gita, he wrote the translation, translation and named it Anasakti Yoga and got the highest self-realization. In 1920-21, Swami Anand, who was an associate of Tilak Maharajji, requested Gandhi to translate the Bhagavad Gita on his own experience so that people would be able to understand it better and would understand about non-violence with proof. So Gandhi heeded to Swami Anand's advice and read Tilak Maharaj's Gita Rahasya in Gujarati when he was imprisoned in Yarwada jail. So Gandhiji had read many translations and he was giving his courses but he thought that maybe not all, not all the translators could claim that they had based their conduct according to the messages of the Bhagavad Gita. But he said I can claim that since the past 38 years I have based my conduct according to the central messages of the Bhagavad Gita and due to this I would like all those men and women who want to lead their life according to the two dharma may read this translation, contemplate on it, it and derive energy from it. Gandhiji not only wanted to give the message of the Gita to people but wanted to share his experience of living according to the Bhagavad Gita. So this was a proof when he said that my life is my message and he and his associates used to consider Gita as the spiritual milestone and used to base their conduct accordingly and remained undeterred even in the face of failures which did not deter them from the chosen path. Two shlokas from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita had made deep impression on young Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi when he was of 19 years old of age and he read it for the first time in London and those were 60, 62nd and 63rd verse Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsa Sangaste Shupajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kamat Krodho Vijayate Krodhat Bhavati Sammoha Sammoha Smriti Vibhramaha Smriti Bhranshat Buddhi Nasho Buddhi Nashat Pranashyati While Contemplating on the objects of the senses, one develops attachment to them. Attachment leads to desire and from desire arises anger. Anger leads to clouding of judgment and which results in bewilderment of the memory. When the memory is bewildered, the intellect gets destroyed. These two verses left a deep impression on the mind of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He came to consider Gita as an invaluable treatise. The feeling expanded so much that by the time he started writing his autobiography known as My Experiments with Truth in 1922, Gandhiji claimed it to be the best scripture. In the first half of the 20th century, his attempt was to lead his life according to the central messages of the Bhagavad Gita. And he understood the essence of the Gita very in three steps. Firstly, the simple and straight path of Swadharma or the path of inner calling should never be abandoned. Abandoned for the crooked path of Adharma, wrong path, or Paradharma, 
path of others. Secondly, realizing the impermanence of the body, it should be used only for the swadharma and must be cast away without hesitation whenever it is needed for swadharma. Thirdly, the fact that spirit is all pervasive and omnipresent and must always be borne in mind and all the differentiation of mine and yours must be cast away. Gandhiji had immense faith in prayer, meditation, recitation of Ramanama, nature cure, Swadeshi, Swachata, Seva and Sarvote including Simran and Sangha and spoke out from his personal experience. He often quoted a Tamil saying which always remi remained in his memory and that was God is the help of the helpless. So this way describing the essence of all prayers in January 23rd 1930 he had said to seek first the kingdom of heaven within you and everything will be added unto you. In the Covid crisis people are discovering just how much control they have over their thoughts which actually is very little. In a crisis fear and anxiety start to roam the mind and struggling against them does only a little good which is temporary at best. Thus, that is why so many people turn to denial and distraction. They try to deny their fear, fearful thoughts and turn to distractions to escape through all kinds of things which are most often destructive. But there is a better way. When a crisis makes you feel stressed, meditation, yoga and prayer relieves the stress response. Fear and anxiety are forms of stress that become exaggerated when events become uncertain, when you feel a loss of control over the situation and when the stress keeps repeating itself without let up, the thinking mind reacts to all of these conditions and it starts affecting the brain and all the enzymes that are released. It always has, even in normal times, but the crisis brings stress into high relief, making it very difficult to cope. So we are coming across mental stress, which is again becoming a pandemic equally challenging as the Corona virus COVID-19 pandemic. In September 1927, Gandhi had said, we want healers of soul rather than, the, rather than of bodies and the multiplicity of hospitals and medical men is no sign of civilization. The less we and others pamper our body, the better for us and the world. To say one thing and to do something different would be deception. No one could, dece no one could deceive God because he was, is omnipresent and omniscient. Gandhiji comes across as the greatest wellness guru who comes free of cost. So we will now see his own philosophy through a dhun called Aakhe Pavitra Rat Satya Hitu Bot. Ishwar Sakshat Honge Antar Satonga. Aakhe Pavitra Rat Satya Hitu Bot. Aakhe Pavitra Rat Satya Hitu Bot. Ishwar Sakshat Honge Antar Tato. Ishwar Sakshat Honge Antar Tato. Satya hi hai Parmeshwar Papu ka go Satya hi hai Parmeshwar Papu ka go Usi Parmeshwar ki nitya kar tu shod Usi Parmeshwar ki nitya kar tu shod Aakhe Pavitra Raak Satya hi tu go Aakhe Pavitra Raak Satya hi tu go Ishwar Sakshat Honge Antar Tato Ishwar Sakshat Honge Antar Tato Ishwar Sakshat Honge Antar Tato On 21st June, the world will celebrate the UN International Yoga Day 
which is the core of the Vedic science that, de that developed in the Indus Valley more than 5000 years ago. It is a state of spontaneous creativity, love, compassion, joy and equanimity. These are also known as the divine attributes or divine qualities described by Lord Krishna in the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Those which help us live with spontaneity and lightness of being and guides us to live with a sense of freedom. Rooted in this connection to spirit, we are able to solve the challenges that arise in life with greater ease and grace. Gandhiji's entire life of Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga and the Samatva Buddhi or Oneness gives us the answer to the complex problems that we are collectively facing during the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic that is still raging all across the world. At this point, Gandhiji said, the self-care needs to be uppermost in our minds and then only we'll be able to care for others. So in COVID-19 crisis, for getting a sense of control over our lives, yoga gives us an integrated approach to mind and body. Yoga karma sukaushalam, that is, yoga is excellence at work. The verse advises us to perform our allocated duty or niyatam karya, as Krishna, Lord Krishna says in an excellent manner. Kaushalam signifies doing work with devotion and without attachment to the fruit of action. Lord Krishna tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 2 verse 50 Buddhi yukto jahati he ubhe sukruta dushkrute tasma yogaya yujjasva yoga karmasu kaushalam We see all these traits in Mahatma Gandhi's life and as said he lived according to the central messages of the Bhagavad Gita without attachment and position and working in the spirit of yajna or sacrifice. Amid the shock and panic, the catastrophe of COVID-19 pandemic has prompted some radical thinking and people are trying to rethink their lifestyles. In our Indian cultures, our ancestors, the sages and seers had already thought about the right way of living. In Gandhiji's life, Sumiran of Ramanama, fasting, upavasa for the control of the senses, prayer, satsang, yoga, meditation, and maun, silence, swavalamban, swadesh, and spinning, seva of humanity through constructive activities for sarvodaya or welfare of all, and in his ashram life through community living in the form of a sangha were all means of his internal strength for leading the spiritual life of equanimity, composure, balance, positivity, inner and outer cleanliness, health and well-being. For the benefit of readers of Indian opinion in South Africa, in about 1906, Gandhiji ha had written a few articles under the heading Guide to Health. And in 1948, when 42, when he was imprisoned in Aga Khan Palace Jail while he was leading the Quit India Movement, and he wrote Key to Health. He said that the book was translated into several English, Indian languages, and English version also appeared. That reached the West, and it was trans translated in all the European languages. The result was that the book became the most famous of all my writings, Gandhiji says. And he said, I, I have never been able to understand the reason for his popularity. I had written these articles casually because I was experimenting on that. And it, I did not attach much importance to them. But perhaps the reason for this popular, popularity can be sought in the fact that I have looked upon the problem of health from a novel point of view somewhat different from the orthodox, orthodox methods adopted by doctors and vaidyas. I'm giving it a new name. It is key to health. Anyone who observes the rules of health mentioned in this book will find that he has got in it a 
real key to unlock the gates leading to hell. He will not need to knock at the doors of doctors or vaidyas from day to day. Coronavirus COVID-19 is the global pandemic of our time. But Spanish flu remains the deadliest pandemic in modern history, killing at least 50 million people and infecting more than 500 million. The 1918 H1N1 virus played a critical role in altering the course of India's history. Just like in the case of COVID-19 pandemic, which is now happening, there was no known medical treatment available to treat patients. The world of medical science was in a nascent stage back then. Developing a vaccine against Spanish flu was out of question. The first flu vaccine came in the scene only in 1940. The first antibiotic medicine came in 1928, years after the Spanish flu had ravaged the human population. So it was social distancing, wearing masks and quarantining oneself that saved the world, particularly the developed ones back then. And that is what Gandhiji also advised people to do. And this is what we learn from Gandhiji that during the pandemic, the current pandemic of COVID-19, which has come in a very different kind of mutation, which is capable of infecting us and we are, makes us capable of infecting others. We need to listen to the scientists, to the doctors, and to the government while they are putting in measures of control and of course learn from Gandhiji. So healthy crux of Mahatma Gandhi's life remains prayer, chanting of Ramanama, Simran, fasting, passion for walking. He used to walk for 18 kilometers per day. Experiments in dietetics, vegetarianism, seva and serving people, Swadeshi through spinning charka and making khadi for self-reliance and in food and clothing, swachata, remaining calm and composed, rising above joys and sorrows, his personal joys and sorrows. He used to share the joys and sorrows of others by becoming one with them through compassion, love and forgiveness and service for the welfare of all. So these are all the things that now we need to understand and learn from Mahatma Gandhi's lifestyle for coping up physically, mentally and spiritually by living in harmony with nature now and in the future also. Instead of inventing a new style, lifestyle, we just have to get inspired to take actions and learn from Gandhiji's, Mahatma Gandhi's life and make the necessary changes in thought, words and conduct. And this is the future that the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is pointing out to us. If we observe carefully, many lessons are very clear and some are still unknown, surrounding us in us uncertainty. This uncertainty is causing mental stress, anxiety, existential crisis, fear of extinction and fear of death. And mass psychology live of living in depression and grief is pointing out towards this fact. We are collectively grieving for the loss of our known life of lifestyle. However, at a deeper level, level, it is for the wellness of humans to coexist in harmony with Mother Nature for the sake of our mere existence. We need to live with the rhythm of the universe and support the nature by taking care of all its creations who are part of the biodiversity. There is no alternative to this lifestyle. We have to only uh, follow the standard prevention methods, take care of ourselves and others. The community and mutual support is essential and so is the happiness and welfare of others for having access to pure air, water and food. We have to say no to injustice, intolerance, violence, war and must live in peace, brotherhood with interdependence, harmony, compassion and oneness. Any thought or conduct in the opposite direction and the lust and greed for money, wealth, position and power is certain to bring annihilation and global warming has already brought in so much changes and all everyone is suffering due to climate change and corona virus COVID-19. These problems have to be global only. Waging wars, indulging in hatred, terrorism, greed, capturing, spreading, unrest, destruction are as, uh, as usual useless and for all those even whom we hate are the victims of the same climate threat. 
in our civilization. Our ancient sages have looked at us as Vishwamanava, the global citizen, and have said that Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, the world is a family. We are all part of the same human family, interconnected and interdependent, and we have only one home, that is the planet Earth. So now, with the time, since time is wealth, and time is the only non-renewable resource that we have, and Bhagavad Gita says that the great annihilator annihilates those who waste time. Krishna says in the chapter 11 of, and verse 32, Kalos mi loka kshaya krit prabruddho lokan samaha tarvumiha prabruddha rate pitvam na bhavishyanti sarve yeva stita pratyami keshu yodha. So remembering that we have to go from this planet earth by making this place very beautiful for others, we must feel that oneness and with the blessings of Mahatma Gandhi for whom I must say, from, uh, uh, recite a shloka from the Bhagavad Gita chapter 3rd verse 21 Yad yad acharati shreshthas tatta teve tarojana sa evam pramanam kurute lokas tat anuvartate Whosoever, whatsoever the best do it that the lower kind of man puts into practice the standard he creates the people follows and Gandhiji had created standards in everything that he do uh, that he did with Gandhiji's blessings and the dhun for the well-being, safety, health and, and just peace of everybody. We will finish it with a Gandhi Katha dhun Shubh Mangal Ho. Thank you.